We're going to go into censorship. Now, Glenn Greenwald has put out an alert, and I think we all need to be paying attention to this. You guys know how I feel about censorship. And go ahead and smash that like button for me if you haven't had a chance to do so. That helps me out with the algo. Here we go. So Glenn Greenwald uh, tweeted this, and I did a little bit, little bit of digging here to find out more information. So Glenn said, breaking, the censorship regime in Brazil is growing rapidly, virtually daily now. We just obtained a censorship order that is genuinely shocking, directing multiple social media platforms to immediately remove numerous prominent politicians and commentators. Let's go on. I can't overstate how shocking and dangerous this new censorship order is. It's from the same judge that even the New York Times had been warning about as authoritarian. Alexandre de Moras. Read this New York Times article. It was from September. It's now severely escalating. So let's go ahead and take a look at this article. To defend democracy is Brazil's top court going too far. So I want to make this very clear. These demands are coming from the court. Let's go on. Brazil's Supreme Court has acted as the primary check on President Bolsonaro's power. Now many are worried the court is posing its own threat. Let's go into this. The group chat on WhatsApp was a sort of digital locker room for dozens of Brazil's biggest businessmen. There was a shopping mall tycoon, a surfwear founder, and Brazil's big box store billionaire. They complained about inflation, sent memes, and sometimes shared inflammatory opinions. Let's go down here. Given Brazil's history, with dictators and the widespread fears that President Bolsonaro will refuse to accept an election loss, it was a worrisome comment. They're referring to the comment that was made here earlier about the return of a workers' party. But what followed was perhaps even more alarming for the world's fourth largest democracy. Federal agents raided the homes of eight of the businessmen. The authorities froze their bank accounts, subpoenaed their financial phone and digital records, and told social networks to spend, to suspend some of their accounts. So does this sound familiar to you? This is similar to what happened to Amali Yeshitela, who's the chairman of the Huru movement, the African Socialist Party, when the FBI raided their facility. The order came from one Supreme Court judge, Alejandre de Moras. The only evidence it cited was the WhatsApp group messages, which had been leaked to a journalist. In those messages, only two of the eight businessmen had suggested they supported a coup. Let me make something very clear about these leaked messages. This is important. When I tell you, if you think that what you're sending to other people on these social media platforms, whether it's uh, WhatsApp, these chat, actually these chat platforms, WhatsApp, whether it's sending someone a message via DM and Twitter, if you think that that information cannot be leaked, you are wrong. That's why I say, don't send someone something that you would not, you would not mind if it were leaked. So this was a conversation between those men and it was leaked. It was a raw display of judicial force that crowned a trend years in the making. Brazil's Supreme Court has drastically expanded its power to counter the anti-democratic stances of Mr. Bolsonaro and his supporters. 
In the process, according to experts in law and government, the court has taken its own repressive turn. Let's go on here. Mr. Morris has jailed five people without a trial for posts on social media that he said attacked Brazil's institutions. Now, this kind of reminds me of some of the things that I had read about uh, Fidel Castro. Were there some good things that Fidel Castro did? Yes, but there were also some bad things. When it gets to the point where your speech can determine your freedom or not, that is very scary. And at one point it had got to that point, like in Cuba, where it's like, you couldn't say bad things about Castro or you may be imprisoned. Now we're moving in the same dangerous territory here in Brazil. They're watching what people are saying on social media. And if they don't feel that it's to their liking, they could lock them up. He has also ordered social networks to remove thousands of posts and videos with little room for appeal. Again, here we have a judge telling social media what they can and cannot have on their platform. And this is actually going to link to the next story, which is uh, part 15 of the Twitter files, because judges and politicians should not be telling social media networks what they can and cannot have on their platform. But apparently that's been happening all along. Let's go on. And this year, 10 of the court's 11 justices sentenced a congressman to nearly nine years in prison for making what they said were threats against them in a live stream. The power grabbed by the nation's highest court, legal experts say, has undermined a key democratic institution in Latin America's biggest country as voters prepare to pick a president on October 2nd. This was right before Lula had won. In many cases, Mr. Morris has acted unilaterally, emboldened by new powers the court granted itself in 2019 that would allow it to, in effect, act as an investigator, prosecutor, and judge all at once in some cases. So let's go back to Glenn Greenwald's thread here. And then I have a video clip I want to show you as well where he discusses this. A sign of how repressive the situation in Brazil is, I have spent hours with lawyers even figuring out if I can report this. You see how far this is going? I've confronted governments around the world, and this is the only time I've ever asked, should I report on this? Can I safely criticize this judge? But the only reason to become a journalist is to do your job no matter what the threat or risk. And he goes on to say that we'll be live on Rumble with our system update program at its regular time to report this and explain the immense dangers of it. It is stunning. And then he goes on here to say, below is the second article from the New York Times on the dangers of this judge censorship powers from October, I've never seen a judge in any democracy with this level of power. He's become a venerated hero of the Brazilian left, feared and off limits from criticism. And here's the thing, even if you agree that those businessmen, the comments that they had, even if you feel that those comments were inappropriate, what you do have to understand is that when it comes to censorship, this is a dangerous slope. Because once you start to pull some people for speech that you feel is not appropriate, eventually it gets to the point where no one's safe, regardless of what side you're on politically, regardless if you're on the left or the right. That's the danger of it. Myra's mama said Glenn should probably move. 
LB, Glenn will probably leave, have to leave Brazil soon. Yeah, so for those who are not aware, Glenn lives in Brazil. So, of course, this is going to be a huge concern to him. Now, I want to go to this clip that Glenn has, and then I'll look at the timestamp to see if I have time to go to that other uh, article there. But Glenn did talk about this on System Update. I want you to hear what he has to say. This is very worrisome. And even though it's happening in Brazil and you may not live in Brazil, it can happen in other countries too. Sometimes all it takes is for one country to set that precedent. Let's go on. Let's hear what Glenn had to say about this on System Update. We have on several occasions since our show debuted less than a month ago, reported on what has become the uniquely repressive censorship regime in Brazil, in which a single judge on the Supreme Court has ordered countless people, including elected members of Congress, journalists, analysts, activists, and a whole wide range of others, banned not from one social media platform, but from, the, from all social media platforms. And we have explained over and over why it is that this censorship regime is so uniquely threatening. And in fact, although the censorship regime has been overwhelmingly, not entirely, but overwhelmingly directed at the Brazilian right and supporters of former President Jair Bolsonaro, it is such an alarming censorship regime that even the New York Times leading up to the election on two separate occasions has issued warnings in the form of news reports about how excessive and unlimited this judge's power has, ha, powers have become. And we've reported on that before, but tonight there is a radical new escalation of the censorship, of the censorship regime in the form of a previously secret order that was issued just today. There's nothing about our show that is scripted. We learned of this order just a few hours ago spent most of our time consulting with specialists in Brazilian law, but also our own lawyers. Now let's pause here. What does this say? Brazil targets Twitter, Facebook, and Rumble. And let's remember, Glenn's show, the full episode of his show, exists on Rumble. So just keep that in mind. To ensure that we are able to report on this, and I have to say, as somebody who has reported in multiple countries, confronted multiple governments, been threatened by governments, there has never been a case in my entire journalistic career where I found myself hesitating before criticizing a political official the way I find myself sometimes hesitating when I go to question or criticize the powers wielded by this one specific judge, Alessandro de Moraes. That is how repressive and threatening by design this entire censorship regime is. It's not just about banning people from the internet. He has ordered members of Congress arrested, activists and journalists arrested with no trial. People are in exile out of fear of his orders. The entire time, many people, including myself, were concerned about authoritarianism from the Bolsonaro government, given his history, Jair Bolsonaro's history of anti-democratic statements. And there were acts of his government I consider authoritarian, including the government's attempt to imprison me for reporting I did in 2019. But just as happened in the United States, where institutions of power united in the name of stopping Donald Trump, and concluded that everything and anything they do, no matter how authoritarian, is justified in the name of stopping Trump, Brazilian institutions, establishment institutions, have done the same in the name of stopping not just Bolsonaro, but the Bolsonaro movement, to the point where all kinds of censorship and imprisonment without due process and searches and seizures of people's homes are being done without even the pretense of due process. Now, let's go back to what I mentioned earlier about a precedent being set. Notice he mentioned Donald Trump being removed from Twitter. Remember that whole ordeal? Well, that could have been the precedent. That could have been that idea that, look, dude's got to go. He's saying dangerous things. Someone make the call. We're just going to go ahead and pull him from Twitter. And whether you like Donald Trump or not, looking back on it, that kind of set a precedent. 
because other people were removed after that. And it's been obviously we've talked about the censorship on Twitter multiple times and Facebook, although I think most of you have told me you're not really as active on Facebook anymore. Um, but that in itself could set a precedent. We need to remove that type of rhetoric. We need to remove that person. So then you have another country like Brazil that can come in and say, oh, United States did that, huh? Well, hell, maybe we should start removing some of the people that we think are using rhetoric that we find to be uh, offensive or goes against uh, the political administration at hand. Or it's, it's an ideology that we do not find to be our, ourselves to be fond of. We should start removing people too. And this can spread. Now, I'm not saying necessarily that that's where they got the idea from, but I think that particular incident did set a precedent because if you can remove the president of the United States from social media, who else can you not remove? So that was huge. Let's go on. So let's get to this new order tonight. I will show you exactly what it says. We don't want to show you the hard copy of the order because oftentimes if you do that, it can reveal who the source is that provided it to you. And since the judge not only issued a repressive order, but within it ordered the targets of this order to keep secret what it was that he ordered them to do and gave them two hours to comply, we want to make sure to protect our sources. But as a journalist, I feel I have the right but my lawyers made clear it's not entirely 100% clear that I have it. I'm nonetheless taking it to report this and publicize this order, notwithstanding his demand that it be maintained in secrecy. I'm not a, a party to this order. He has an order of journalists to do so. Only these, uh, these, these, these social media platforms. So I want to protect our source. We've translated the order from Portuguese, where it was obviously issued, into English. And I'm now about to show it to you when it's full and complete form. So, and I appreciate the fact that this was translated into English. <laughs> I just wanted to say, I appreciate that. At the top, you can see it on the screen. It, it notes the investigation number of the case from the federal district, which is where the court is situated in Brazil. You see there the name of the judge, uh, Minister Alessandro de Marais. He's one of uh, the members of the Brazilian Supreme Court, and then author, prosecutor, investigator, and lawyer, it all says under legal secret. So not even the names of the people who brought this action, who are the lawyers involved, everything is completely secret upon his order, including the contents of the order itself. Now, it's- Right, so if you look up here, author, prosecutor, investigator, lawyer, it all says under legal secret, so that information is not being revealed. Um, and then you come down here when it says to the companies. Now it does list the companies, Facebook, Rumble, Telegram. Damn, they're going after Telegram. I missed that part earlier. Sorry, I missed that part about the Telegram. I'm surprised by that one. See people, let me say something really quick. Uh, for people who tell me, guys, let's get off of Twitter and go to Telegram. I just want to let you know, Telegram isn't necessarily safe either. I think we need like a, a totally different platform, something that is Eric, Eric's in the chat. Eric knows uh, the technology terms for this, but Eric had explained this to me before. We need something that is not, I don't know. I, Eric can explain it in the chat, but anyway, um, Telegram, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube, by the way, TikTok if you want to get kicked off a platform, TikTok, it's very easy to get kicked off of TikTok. Very easy. They don't play over there. A lot of the things we say here on YouTube and even on Twitter, you can't say on TikTok. I'm just saying. What's that, Eric? Open source. That's what it is. Eric has said this multiple times. We need something that is open source. So you can't really rely on Telegram either. That's right, LB. They put them on the list. Okay, so Facebook, Rumble, Telegram, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube. Let's go on. It's addressed to six different companies. Facebook, and specifically Facebook's company that is Brazilian in nature that operates Facebook in Brazil. That's number one. Number two, Rumble, which is the platform on which this show is aired and is currently airing exclusively. 
The third mm -hmm. is Telegram, which is the service that is designed to ensure not only anonymity, but also to protect people's free speech rights from the attempt by authoritarian governments and authoritarian censors to silence them. The fourth is TikTok, the fifth is Twitter, and the sixth is YouTube. So six different companies, none of which is Brazilian other than the Brazilian version of Facebook. These are all foreign social media companies. And at least in the case of Rumble, Rumble has no ties to Brazil at all. It has no office in Brazil. Yep. It has no marketing campaigns that is aimed at are, that are aimed at Brazilians. It, yep. it, Brazilians are allowed, like everyone else in the world, to join Rumble if they wish. There are Brazilian, there's a Brazilian program in particular from a very popular podcast host who became the topic of this order, but Rumble doesn't exist in Brazil. It has no bank accounts in Brazil. It has no uh, physical offices in Brazil. And yet this order purports to compel not just Rumble, but all of these other companies to obey the censorship order of a single Brazilian judge. So he's not only acting as censor of Brazil, but apparently of the entire world. The order reads, Mr. Director, it's a loose translation, quote. I just want to say something really quick before we go back into this. I was kind of surprised they had Rumble listed on here as well, because I was like, uh, out of all the social media platforms, like they, they are going after Rumble. Like, I was kind of surprised by that one. YouTube, I could understand like some of these more popular ones like YouTube, Facebook, but I was surprised they, they, they dug their teeth in, into Rumble. This is the judge in his order. I hereby communicate to you that the following decision was made in the judicial action, the details of which remain under legal secret for immediate compliance. And you see there immediate is in all capital letters, which is how it appears in the order itself. So we're not only ordering you to do this and keep it secret, but we're ordering you to comply immediately in the following terms. And here's what the order says, quote, considering the following facts, I hereby determine the expedition of legal communications to the company's Facebook, Rumble, Telegram, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube, so that within the deadline of two hours, he's given them two hours to obey, proceed with the blocking of the channels, accounts, and profiles listed below, under the sanction of a daily fine of 100,000 Brazilian reais. Let's look that up. 100,000 Brazilian reais. 100,000 Brazilian reais. The U.S. dollars today. Jesus. All right. Um, currency converter. 100,000 Brazilian reais equals $19,655.25. Sorry, just wanted to tell you what that was. Let's go on. Which is roughly the equivalent of $20,000 a day. And the providing to the Supreme Court of the registration data associated with those accounts, as well as the maintenance of the contents. So the order directs these six companies to do three things. Number one, immediately or generously within two hours, completely ban not specific posts that have been deemed illegal, but to ban the entire account to prohibit all of these individuals from speaking. On and they gave them a deadline of two hours. They wanted them to ban these accounts within two hours. Do you guys see how dangerous this is becoming now? Like, it's not just about the Twitter files, which we're going to get into that in a second. But I wanted to prove a point here. The fact that you have people like judges, politicians, the FBI, the CIA, telling social media companies who to remove. We are living in an authoritarian state. A lot of people just don't see it. If you haven't read about the Twitter files, you probably don't even know about it. Most of my friends didn't even know what that was when I was talking about it, especially if you're not on Twitter. But this is very concerning, and all of you should be worried. I feel like we're going backwards in this country. Like, we're not going forward, we're going backwards. Let's go on.
on these platforms, whether or not they have violated the platform's rules themselves. That's the first command. Immediately ban all of these individuals from being able to speak on your platform, whether you want to or not. Number two, provide to us all of the data associated with these accounts. Whatever information they provided to you, their address, their telephone number, their legal name, everything about them, we demand that you turn over to us. And then their legal name. Hold on. Let me move this back. He said their legal name to turn over their. This is scary. Telephone number, their legal name, everything about them. We demand that you turn over to us. And then number three, we require you to preserve the content of all of these accounts. To keep Do you guys understand how scary that is? to turn over people's legal names and their phone numbers for what DC said nowhere is safe exactly <sighs> keep them not allow them to be deleted even if the people want them deleted you are required to preserve them all and then of course embedded in that is a fourth command which is you may think this is really repressive you may disagree vehemently with the order we're giving you, but you are nonetheless prohibited from disclosing publicly what you what we've demanded you to do. So presumably, if they obey the order and remove all of these uh, people, some of whom are elected members of Congress in Brazil, others of whom are journalists and commentators and activists, if those people come and say, why did you just destroy my livelihood? Why did you just take down my page? Mm -hmm. Presumably, they're not allowed to say it's because we were ordered to by Judge de Marais. They, they're required to maintain complete secrecy about the censorship order itself. Glenn might have to move. Like, just like, when I first saw this, I was like, Glenn, it, Glenn might have to move to another country if this is how things are going to be. Because obviously he's a journalist. Obviously he has a show on Rumble and on YouTube. If this is how things are going to, to be, it, I don't know. It might be time for Glenn to move. Now here then come the list of all the accounts that... All right. And then if you want to see the full, that's what I was saying, the full version, you have to see that on Rumble. But I'm not going to show you that because you should go over to Rumble and watch it. <laughs> um, but yes, this is this is mind boggling to me. This is very scary. And for those just tuning in, remember, Glenn Greenwald does live in Brazil. And that's where this is coming from. So I don't know if everyone has had a chance to watch that full episode on rumble but if you haven't even like after this show go check it out so you can see the rest of that information but this is very scary to just come in and remove people journalists politicians whatever remove these people now we're going to go to some of the comments and then we're going to transition into the twitter the twitter files part this is technically, I think, part 15 from Matt Taibbi because these things are connected. So let me go to some of the comments here. Eric said, we need an open source public domain solutions, democratically operated with due process, et cetera. This is why I tell people when people are like, oh, well, don't do Twitter, do, let's go over to Telegram or let's go over to Discord. I've seen Discord, Discord accounts removed too. A. Ross says, unpopular opinion of an independent. Sherry said, Panquake. I still don't know when Panquake is going to premiere. I'm still waiting for that. I, I know I interviewed them almost, I think, a year ago. Justin K. says, Mastodon is decentralized. I do have a Mastodon account, and I forget it. I forget about it sometimes. I need to go back over there. Oz is in the house. What's up, Oz? Thanks so much for the super chat. Let's get Sabby 50,000 subs by July 4th. Thank you. Oh, God. <laughs> Ooh, that would be, that would be something else. Um, I Bliss says, you do need a citizen server by the citizens for the citizens. 
until then, all apps are owned by companies in bed with the government. Somebody should screenshot this because that that's the, this is the big message I try to give to people is like people watching you on telegram too, bud. Interesting. 